Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to talk about a couple of things. I'm going to read some letters and we'll, we'll discuss that. But there's a question that came in from Linda. Linda S. And she asks, why snail mail? Well, this is the thing. I do not do computers at all. If I use a computer or have to go on a computer for some reason, this is what I use. A pencil with an eraser on the end of it. I cannot use my fingers to touch a key. So therefore, it's very hard and it's cruddy trying to do something on a computer with a pencil. If something's really important that I need to see, Ted, my husband, will call me down the basement and say, look at this, I'll stand over his shoulder and watch. If it's something that's really, really, really important, however you do that with a computer, he'll make, he'll send it someplace and get a copy of it and show me the copy. So it, it's really hard. The other thing is I don't use a cell phone. And this is actually the phone that I use to talk to you folks on. I mean, seriously, here's the plug-in. It's a plug-in phone, no cell phone. I have a white one of these, this color, and I used to have a princess one somewhere too, but I can't find it. So that's the other thing. Now, cell phones, if I'm in the SUV with my husband and a call comes in on his cell phone, I was all excited because I could actually talk to somebody through the radio. I didn't have to hold the phone. So that's why snail mail works best for me. I am just obviously not a computer person. I mean, I think you got a pretty good idea of that just watching some of these YouTubes. Just, just trying to get the information out there. First letter, it is from Adana, and this is what she writes. I hear someone walking in my upstairs very often since we've been in this house for five years. It has been heard by many people, and the house has been smudged. Please help if you can. I don't know if I should be worried or not. If you're hearing somebody walking around upstairs, then there's probably an earthbound spirit. Spirits that have crossed over usually do not make that kind of noise in a house. You say you smudged. That's great. But did you smudge correctly? Every room in the house has to be smudged. Inside every closet, the attached garage, the basement. You can't leave a spot without the smoke because that's where an earthbound spirit will be hiding. So if you want to smudge the house every two weeks to keep this person lethargic, they don't retaliate, that would be my best suggestion. I cannot tell from your letter if you actually have something in the house or not. Again, a phone call would be necessary and leave a message at least a minute long and I will t call you back as soon as I can and tell you if there's something going on in your house or not. Another one is from Kaya from Spokane. Um, moved into this house in 2010 and we always saw a little boy running around and playing. We called him Guy. Now I have a son and when he was a baby he was snatched out of my bed toward my feet. That would have to be a really, really, really strong earthbound spirit to do something like that. Um, not saying it didn't happen. Again, I've learned a long time ago, never say never. And lately, her son's been standing in the hallways just waving and laughing. The other night, he sat up in bed laughing, and I sat up thinking he was dreaming, and he was just laughing so hard, and he kept pointing to his closet. I hear footsteps running when no one else is home upstairs. Could that be a spirit? I also have my grandmother's ashes in my house. Could it be her? Let's go to your grandmother first. If it would be your grandmother in the house, why would she do that? Why would she make footsteps around in your house and not let you know she's there? If you've dreamt of your grandmother, then she's where she's supposed to be because earthbound spirits 
do not get in drinks. Now, if you had this little boy in your house years ago, and now you think your son is seeing this little boy in this house, this is the thing. When an earthbound spirit, an earthbound spirit does not age. So if a child died when he was five or six years old, he's still going to be five or six years old. He's going to be handing out with live kids that are five or six years old. Your kids get older every day. Eventually, they're going to get too old and the little boy spirit is going to go to a house where there are little kids again. So my guess is this is not the same child that you saw when you were a child. But your son is obviously not afraid of this person. He's not screaming. He's not being woken up in the middle of the night. This very well could be grandma visiting, but she's crossed over. And why wouldn't you want to see her grandchild? So I don't think that you've got a problem with grandma. You may have something in the house. But again, from a letter, I cannot tell. But I hope that helps you a little bit. This one is from a lady named Celeste. And her and her husband purchased a house in September of 2017. The house was built in 1976. I always heard noises. One in particular was someone sneezing. The sneeze was so loud that I thought my husband was home and called out his name. When I went to the kitchen, no one was there. I immediately called him and told him that I thought someone was in our home. When we got home, when he got home about 15 minutes later, he went downstairs with a knife because, based on my reaction, he believed someone was in our basement. I have heard faucets turning on and off, but when I check, all the sinks are dry. I was convinced someone was living in our attic because of the sounds. I will find our sliding doors partially cracked in the mornings and on, uh, in the morning on most days. These noises have been going on since we moved here. A few days ago I learned there was an architect that designed and was the original owner of the house. He also designed our development. I learned he hung himself in the garage. This house was put up for sale in 1996 by owner and the article stated, we'll sacrifice for $110,000 and include the house and included the house had been appraised for $157,000 at the time. I believe that he may have committed suicide before this and someone just wanted to get rid of the house. Okay, a couple of things. First of all, I'm not sure exactly what state you live in, Celeste, but in Ohio, if there was a violent death on property, that has to be disclosed. If somebody dies of natural causes, the real estate agent does not have to tell you or the homeowner. But if it was a violent death, and suicide is violent, a murder, something like that, that has to be disclosed. So that's one way, you know, a lot of times people will check that before they even buy a house. If this man did commit suicide on the property, that does not mean he has to stay on that property forever. He can go anywhere he wants. Who's going to tell him he can't? But he may be curious about the house. Everything that you say, faucets, noise in the attic, patio doors being left open, depending on the time of the month with the moons, he absolutely positively could do that if it was him. Smudge, have the house blessed by an ordained priest or minister. See if that doesn't help. Leave a note out on one piece of paper and on that piece of paper write boldly, go to and name the closest funeral home to your home, to your house. Go to Smith's when there's a service going on and use the white light. Don't say it out loud. Put, put it on your refrigerator, leave it on your dining room table. Leave it somewhere so if this man is in the house and he sees that letter, he will know how to cross over. The problem is when people lose their white light, they really don't know how to do it. But if they go to a funeral home where there's a service going on, that person standing at the foot of their casket with the white light around them, that is not an individual light, that's a universal light. 
So all he has to do is go be bopping into that light and he'll be where he needs to be. That might actually help. And the last one. I had imaginary, imaginary friends growing up. My sisters and I experienced a lot in our childhood homes and grandmother's house. I'm interested in the following. Were my imaginary friends earthbound spirits or guides? Probably earthbound spirits. They would not have been guides for a little kid. Did they stay with me but my relationship with them changed? Yes, you got older. And so they would have gone to a house where there were younger children like I stated before. Spirit guides are with you constantly from the time you're born other than your guardian angel. And as you age, you mature spiritually, mentally, physically, your spirit guides change. So they keep getting more interesting and help you as the older that you get. The older you get, they will help you. Now they say an adult at any given time can have 15 to 16 spirit guides around them. That's proud. As you get older, some of these start leaving so that when you're a very old person, maybe you're just down to one or two again. So, but, so I don't think what you were talking about or writing about was actually guides. Were they some of the energies I felt in childhood, home as I aged? Yeah, you can feel the energies from people. And I also felt a combination of sadness but with hope. One of my sisters always felt hopeless. If it was a child in this grandmother's house or your, your family home, if the child died because of an illness or because of something drastic or terrible that happened, that earthbound spirit is going to be sad. And if they're in your space all the time, you eventually are going to start picking up on some of those feelings. Now, they're not going to possess you or anything like that. But yes, they absolutely, you could have felt some of their despair. So, but you've moved and so I think that's good now. But right now, we're done for today. I will be doing letters again next week. And please, I appreciate the letters coming in. I love it, love it, love it. And again, please sign up for uh, the YouTube. And um, you'll see me next week. Bye-bye.